Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Tech One Two Podcast. Super psyched today. I have Artisha Moore, CEO of Association Forum, in the studio today, and we're talking about associations and tech. So let's get started. All right, fantastic. All right, so I'm so excited to have you in the studio today. Just a little bit of background on you. I have Artisha Moore in the studio today is an accomplished association management professional with 25 years, 25 years of experience. Wow. She is she is the president and CEO of Association Forum and has spent the last 15 years focused on membership engagement, technology, strategy, workforce development programs for professional associations. In 2021, You were elected as one of the ASAE class of fellows, having previously been named one of the Association Trends Magazine 2012 Young and Aspiring Association Professionals. Wow. I mean, what the, what in the world? Who, me? No. You just look and listen to those words like, who are they talking about? Oh, that's me. 25 years? that's me. (laughs) You know what? And I say it boldly now. Because as I approach that middle part of life, whatever that is in career, you can say that out loud. Before when I was saying it and I was really young, like, girl, did you go to school? Like, what did you work? I worked and did both, right? Like, you, yeah. you have to do that. But I'm blessed. I found early the the industry that that gets me jazz, changed my life. I can drive maximum impact across industries, but I also get so much. So 25 years and hopefully, God willing, another 25. Wow, that's amazing. Let's get it, baby. Yeah, we've been around since 2000. I look at it, it was like snap of the fingers. You know, we started the company back in 2000. You know, last year we would say that la- it was our Jordan year. Everybody mm. who has our, our Chicago reference. But Come now we're now. in our 24th year. Not as long as you, but um, definitely I love, you know, I'm sure you have so much knowledge that you can share for our audience and looking forward to uh, really understanding that. Um, so being in the association space, associations are, we work with many different associations, mm-hmm. but given your position and talking about technology, what is, you know, association and technology, um, what is it, what do they have in common now? Because traditionally we've seen that associations were considered more antiquated in technology and we believe We believe that technology needs to be at the forefront, and we've seen a shift with Mm. association. So I'd love to get your uh, input and aspect on that. Uh, So I'll start this by saying, because we we just early, okay? I tend to be very uh, dystopian future girl. So just (laughs) listen to it with that, that lens when I say this. I'm excited where we are today. We still are so behind the conversion and adaptability, and and really, I think— integrating tech into everything we do. So let me go back to say when Empus started, that's when right around the 2006, 2007 timeframe, I was a membership expert, right? Mm. Like I was a membership sales kind of development, pushing out membership growth engagement. But I knew how to write SQL code and I was an expert in relational data, right? So that's what I started with. In 2008, I took over a tech job, like the senior director of technology, not because I knew how to write the things or integrate the systems. Our business is technology. Because the wave of Web 2.0 was coming, right? And how are people engaging? So associations at the time, I was the very first one that was senior director of membership and technology. That was almost 20 years ago. Wow. We still have this separation. So when I started, websites were a tech thing. It was like a way amazing thing, right? It was amazing. That is now admin work. Content management systems are admin work. But associations antiquated. It isn't in their systems. It is in the way that the systems, yes. It's in the way that we think about revenue reinvestment in technology in order to drive the business. I love how you said the investment, though, piece of it, because oftentimes organizations, not just in the association space, but they see it as an expense. Mm -hmm. They see it as an line item of an expense, the same way that they see their cleaning, the cleaning service of their office, the garbage disposal. But technology needs to be an investment. It has to be strategically. You need to look at. So I've been successful in looking at a reinvestment of revenue in order to drive revenue. 
<laughs> I'm going there. I'm going there. Yeah. But so when my staff hears this, they're gonna be like, mm-hmm, she went there. Scared money don't make money. Oh, I love it. Oh, okay. Yep. So scared money don't make money. Bars. 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 <laughs> All the way bars. It needs to be something that makes sense, but five to 10%, depending on where you want to leapfrog, depending on where you want to go, needs to be reinvested. Not just in the bells and whistles. Oh, I love it. I love it. In the people, right? So if we buy a system, I am very annoyed when we do something and people are like, well, I don't know how to use it. I'm sorry, what? That's (laughs) when my IT, right? I was a senior director, CIO type, We all of this investment. If we're spending it and the admin staff doesn't know how to use it, and we're not making money today or in the future. Yep. The generative AI took everybody by storm. For me, I was like, did y'all not remember Watson? Isn't this what Watson was supposed <laughs> to be telling us? Because I remember this. Yep. Right. I'd be right, like Watson. A, come on. Mm-hmm. So how do we look at it now as the way to drive our business? Lots of associations got caught up because they weren't ready to go virtual. I was shocked to hear in 2020 how many people weren't in the cloud. I'm sorry. Yeah. Come on, what are we talking about? I went to the cloud the first time with my first organization in 2012. I had to, I didn't know about it. I had a partner like an impus mm-hmm. that was like, look, we need to get out here, security. All I could think of is what happens in China. Why? Because I just watched dystopian <laughs> future movies. I don't know. I love Chinese scientists and all of that. Who's going to take over the stuff? Yeah. So we need to get to investment, and we are still slow on the uptake. There's a lot of associations that are doing things that are counterproductive because they are scared of tech. Yeah, so the unknown is preventing them from making those investments that are required. But you also mentioned on the adoption piece, this is happening across all industries, even including associations, that they make the investment, they buy a product, the solution, they get 5% adoption of that and wonder why it's not transforming their business. I'm sorry, uh, this is America. So one of the things that we sell a lot is diet. It's <laughs> January, so you know what they sell it? A lot of that. Yep. You know who don't lose weight? Americans. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. you don't use it. Mm-hmm. Because you don't use it. Did you write that down first? Or was it off the top of your head? We can't continue to, uh, and let me also just call out, I'm a CEO now. Let me call out executives now, too. Let me lean into that. Mm-hmm. CIOs and CEOs. And we got this wonderful, great thing. Low tech is still tech. Yep. What do you need? Tools don't change behavior. There's a new shiny thing out there right now. I'm trying to figure out how I can get this money from Zuckerberg. <laughs> if I can, Zuckerberg, I'm coming for you. Mark! He's wired in. Sorry? He's wired in. Is he? Yes. No, I'm not. I just I want the money, boo, to yep. help my industry. Uh, but I'm not saying that I'm going to bring in my office and say we need a workspace in the metaverse because everybody's going. That's stupid. Mm-hmm. We need everybody to understand that you need, can log into a content management system and update a web page because that's basic administrative skills, and use your professional development wisely. Use it, everybody, executives too should understand the basic deck, whatever that is that you've invested in. Are you using it? Because I see a lot of CEOs that love an iPad, but don't know how to log into their own database. True. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, you thought I wasn't going to say it? Yeah. I'm saying it, No, baby. I see it. Not me. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a technical CEO. You better, look, yeah. if you are, I'm leaving. Yeah. You better get it together. Yeah. But how do we bring it? And I think some parts of it is we look to our partners. Mm-hmm. We look to the AMPAs, and there's everybody on the adoption scale. Mm-hmm. They're at the novice, don't be scared. That's where I think I am whispering to boards, don't be scared. Investment seems like a corporate word. We don't mm. do that. Our members in the website. So I said to a group a few years ago, who uses a website? I, I just want to know, because we've spent millions of dollars on this. And what I just did was Google point, click, go to the thing. I'm not saying an app. I'm just saying you're spending so much time. You can have five web pages with a lot of information because the information is going to write. How do people use it? And not how you want them to use it at your association, because we're in this beautiful, blurred tech world where everything is technology. Yep. So you have to adopt. And your members are like, well, we don't even need y'all now because we'll go to Patreon. I was just talking to one of your techs here mm-hmm. about all the people I follow on YouTube about my Marvel content. <laughs> why, why would I pay an association for that? 
right? Yeah. Especially when your tech is behind from a customer standpoint. Second left, come on! So how do you improve the technology though when you look at it and you look at the spectrum of tech and you look at from a member perspective, you look at internal associations and you mentioned even just adoption side of it, making sure that there is a good user experience for your members using the content that's available to them. How do you actually track and manage that um, within the association space? That's a hard place to give advice for one size fits all because it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Our beautiful fabric of associations is that there's the one person shop, there's the volunteer led vol shop, they're the big mega national where I just came from in Washington, D.C., a $50 million organization, right? 200 staff and all of those things. How you track your integration where you're pushing is a lot of different pieces. So if you're a $300,000 organization, right now your tech is phone and it just is. Yeah. But where are you going with it? And that's where I always try to measure. I don't like the sexy new thing. I just don't. My IT folks that, that are listening will laugh and say, she don't even like technology. I really don't. I mean, I just want people to connect and do stuff easier and faster. And I know systems help that. But I also have been benefited to be able to sit here as a CEO because of being a tech strategist, period. Mm -hmm. It made me think different. Wow. How is the systems of it? I can't stop now. In the middle of the night, my husband is a chef. Like, what the hell has the system got to do with it? I <laughs> hey, just want to understand the ecosystem of it all. <laughs> I mean, how does it work? And the stack deck? And what does your tech not? Right? So I think for us, one thing that I would say is, where is your strategic vision, not strategic plan? <laughs> Where's your strategic vision? Where do you want to go in five years? I know for me at Association Forum, we have a lot of low-hanging fruit. I'm a different type of association CEO for this particular industry, right? Because we're very meetings heavy. We're very much very. membership driven heavy, right? And those pieces. And I'm coming in like, what's the future in Mars? Move over, Elon. Here I come, <laughs> right? Like, like, move. I'm yeah. getting it. But when I think about what we're trying to do, we want to get people access to learning to ignite their career. I got a chart towards LinkedIn. I got a chart towards Masterclass. I got a chart towards MIT, ThinkX, because I need to get 17-year-olds excited about coming into this industry and now take out associations of associations and insert anything, mm -hmm. association of medicine. Your 17-year-olds, who are your future workforce, they are doing things with technology right now that you can't even imagine. So the future workforce, um, yes, the 17-year-olds, you're seeing a lot of uh, AI. You're seeing a lot of generative AI. You had mentioned it earlier. Um, so that's that's the, the incoming workforce. What about the existing workforce that's in the association space? How do you how do you upskill them? How do you get their skills to where they need to be in order to properly manage what the vision is from a technology front? You be the change you want to see in the world, and then the ones in power make it a priority. Hmm. Make it a priority. Yeah, make it a priority for them. And be it. Mm -hmm. Be a novice. Executives are scared to some aspects. An old executive. Let me now lean into 25 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In the 90s, we had to be very much the answer. That's their culture, uh, business kind of capitalist. I'm a reforming capitalist, right? Like a, uh, you know, we needed to have the answer, have bravado. It don't matter what your sex is. You're in, you know, if you get at the table, you got the answer. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the answer, and we still don't have the answer. We're learning and continuously learning and applying and adapting. Because if you have the answer, you are married to that. So at our uh, annual holiday showcase this year, our keynote speaker, Diana Kander, rocked my world, okay? Totally rocked my world. She also got me a present that said, AI isn't magic, it's math. <laughs> you loved athlete, it. Right? You I loved it. I was a math it. athlete. I totally loved it. I, yeah. She said she gave the whole comparison of being an innovator versus being an expert. Hmm. And needing to be innovators is curiosity. But I don't want, as I'm in emphasis, powered up office, 
to say that tech has to be generative AI. One thing that I'm learning is when I talk to a 16-year-old, the things that they like are the things that were almost archaic. All of us old heads think that they want to make a robot that looks like a, you know, and be able to talk to them. And I wrote, they don't. Look at the rise of flip phones. Mm. Look at the rise of discourse. Look at the rise of just Slack channels that jump, right? Mm -hmm. They are oversensitized. My niece said a couple years ago when I finally stumbled into TikTok, I'm in there. I'm doing a dance. You're there? I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm doing it. (laughs) She said, old people like TikTok. I'm sorry. I am not old. (laughs) Get your life right. She said, old people like video. I can't lie about that. It's true. I can't lie about that. When she said it, I thought every part of my investment strategy at that time was faster video, more video, more snippets, more. I'm building for what I like. Yeah. So I think if we remain nimble as CEOs, if we set the charge, and then we absolutely hold them accountable for it. We have quarterly uh, learning metrics at the association forum. I brought that in when I came. And recently I had to do my courses. And I was all side-eyed until I was learning stuff like, oh, wait, they don't do that no more? Oh, you don't say that no more? Oh, damn. Okay. (laughs) So I think that us as the C-suites, us as VPs, us as all levels, because there is a huge divide. There was Harvard Business Review did a whole uh, issue about the need for upskilling and reskilling. Yep. Got to happen. Has to happen. Has to happen within the organizations or you'll become archaic and extinct at some point. And then we ain't going to survive, and I won't be Tina Turner in the Thunderdome, okay? (laughs) So we got to survive. So, guys, learn it up. Learn some new things. And in association space, that's what we do. Our profession is about lifelong learning. It's about industry best practice. It's about certification. and Insert whatever your industry is, right? Mm -hmm. It's about scientific advancement. I watch the Consumer Electronics Show every year, right? Not, I don't want to hear no more tech food. I'm, I'm married to a beautiful chef. I, I am not, I'm a foodie. The tech food, y'all can keep that. Embassy, <laughs> have it, I, I'm just, I tried, nah. But I always want to think, not what's coming for, oh, cool holograms, whatever. These clear TVs, baby, hmm. did you see it? Yeah, I saw it. I, if I had some money, <laughs> I would get one, but I also understand the $10,000 plasma from back in the day, Remember right? that? Come on. The 300-pound plasma? 300-pound, <laughs> you need five, five of your friends to move that thing. <laughs> and then it only lasted for like a year, maybe. Like, what the? It reminds me when Betty and I first fell in love. I had just finished my fruit cobbler, right? You're a very difficult person to contact, Spider-Man. So good to finally meet you. It taught me quickly not to be an early adopter. But I look at those things. I look at the advancement of things. I try to understand it, but not so that we could be like, go do this. What is is the learning that led to that? Applied curiosity. Using tech, low tech, high tech, mid tech. Being fearless. Hmm. And asking questions. Why not? So when I pitched as a membership function person that wrote SQL code, SQL code. <laughs> okay, so who wrote SQL code and new relational data and how to spit out this and build out platforms to do that. And I said, can I lead our tech strategy? I didn't even have a degree. Hmm. I had a rebel CEO who was trying to make that money. And she said, you know what? You hungry? You seem to understand it. Let me talk to a few people. They came back and said, our teacher seems real savvy. Let's do it. That only happens in an association. You're thrown in a deep end? Totally. Like, figure it out. And most associations, and the people listening to this, and in the tech folks especially, they will say, uh-huh, that was me. Because I was in the database manager, and somebody said, I, and I just knew what the word was, and now I'm the senior director of IT, and I went back to school, <laughs> and I, right? You knew how to turn on the computer, or we see that a lot. We see that it's like, who's the most technical? Who's the most savvy? The person who ner- knows the most about IT is now this, the titled director of IT. Welcome to associations. Yeah. The beauty of that is the diversity of thought. Hmm. I went to school originally to be a chemist, and then School of Hard Knocks, I had to drop out. I had to eat. 
So working at corporate, working at an adoption agency, working at fast food, working at a bookstore actually helped my thought processes even when I was at my last job before coming to Chicago or even here in Chicago. When I ask questions about things, it comes from an experience of the School of Hard Knocks. I love it. So when we think about upskilling and reskilling, the beauty of associations is that you get to do stuff if you're smart, capable, curious, but we got to invest. So whatever your investment is that you feel sickly uncomfortable with, <laughs> because it's not comfort. Well, we give one to two percent. That's not uncomfortable enough for your tech investment, both mm-hmm. in people and systems. I love it. It just is not. Mm-hmm. But then you have to say, what are we spending our money on? And that gets to be a sticky wicket. Because <laughs> boards are like, well, we don't feel tech. Yeah. It's a cost center. It's not. It's actually a revenue driver. It actually is. It can, you know, our mission at Empus is to fuel businesses with the technology they need to succeed and to really transform them, take it away from the cost center and really look at how can it really transform your business or organization, whatever type of business that you're in, to take you to the next level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned about comfort. You know, we have a saying here is get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mine too. Really? I really, really, really. This motherfucker don't miss. No, he's fucking good. That motherfucker don't miss, man. He's good. In the heat of battle, he don't miss. No. In the heat of controversy, he don't miss. No. You have to. You have to press in on the things that make you uncomfortable because that's the area of opportunity for people. And we look at organizations and that are archaic. They're kind of stuck in the past. And they're like, we're okay. We're okay with where we're at. But that's, a, that's really bad for them. They have to understand that they have to press in on the things that make them uncomfortable. Whether you're a board, whether you're a small association, a large association, you know, a fortune size organization, you have to press in on those things that make you uncomfortable because that's where the magic happens. It is no magic. It is what we call optics. Misery yeah. loves company. And that is something that, exactly. right, so I love it. I love it. I really appreciate you being in the studio today. We can go for hours upon look, I was hours. I to say, okay, so look, uh, yeah. episode yeah. two. No. Yeah. You have to go back to work. I, yeah. I know you have work to do. This is, uh, thank you. This yeah. is my, my extreme honor we, just to be here. No, we absolutely love it. You're welcome here at any time, any time. Your team, we love uh, working with your team as well and being partners. Shout but out to the incredible Hawk Phyllis. She's the mightiest of Incredible. Vendors, so. We love. Boom, Phyllis Scott. Yeah, no, we, we, we love Phyllis. Um, do you have anything else that you want to mention for the audience? Yeah, two things that I always say. First, you know, show up and show out. Um, and then my last parting word, and my husband is going to hate this, so I'm going to say it. Beware of Skynet. You know, there it is. If you know, you know. Yep. You know, you know. So fantastic. Well, thank you again, once again, being in the studio today, Artisha. Um, make sure that you check her out on, check you out on all your social platforms. You even mentioned TikTok today. I don't be posting though. Okay. I just be hiding, but you okay. know, send me an email if you want me yeah. to follow you. So yeah. LinkedIn, Twitter, yeah. TikTok, you can email her and she'll follow you. But we appreciate our audience for tuning in today. And we look forward to seeing our audience uh, on our next Tech One Two podcast. Thank you. Thank you.